Hey guys, and welcome back to The Upper Hand. If you've noticed recently, we've had a baseball player um, with a UCL repair that we've taken through what's called a Thrower's 10 program. We decided we'd go ahead and make a video and show you what that is today. Yeah, so the Thrower's 10 program is designed to exercise and work out the major muscles required for pitching in baseball or that are required in other throwing sports. So each movement within the Thrower's 10 program is designed to strengthen and increase the power and endurance of the muscles in the shoulder and the arm. Yeah, so today during the video we're going to be doing um, things in our clinic here and using the equipment we have here, but we'll also, if we have a patient that we want to, for them to be doing this at home, we'll send them home with like a TheraBand and give them the exercise sheet that they would need so that they could be doing these at home or at the baseball field or wherever that may be. All right, so next we're going to run through each step of the Thrower's 10 program to show you what those steps are so that if you are a baseball player or you need to be doing this, you can know the steps to do it yourself. Or if you're a therapist, you can learn these steps so that you can teach them to a patient, whether in clinic or for an HEP. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start with our first two exercises and we kind of put these two together. Um, they're our diagonal pattern, D2 extension and D2 flexion. So we're gonna go ahead and take our tubing here. Arm's gonna be, your throwing arm is gonna be um, shoulder abducted, externally rotated. You're gonna start kind of above your head. You're gonna lead with your thumb and pull that arm back across to your opposite leg. Hold that for just a second and then go right back out. Okay, just like that. So all of these exercises you can do anywhere from 10 to 20 reps, and then you can even do these multiple times a day, um, three or four sets, but just make sure you um, give yourself plenty of time to rest in between those sets. You don't wanna do them back to back. All right, so the next exercise is for D2 flexion. So it's basically the opposite of what we just did for the D2 extension. So your arm's gonna start down on your opposite leg. You're going to start with your thumb facing almost your hip, and you're gonna start bringing that back up, flexing that shoulder, all the way back to that starting position that we did for D2 extension, and then slowly letting that back in. All right, so for the next one, you're going to be positioned here with your elbow by your side, flexed to 90 degrees, just like so. You wanna start with the band here and your hand here across your stomach, and you're gonna externally rotate your shoulder to here and back into your stomach, just like that. And for these, you just wanna make sure that they're just slow and controlled. And the next one is the opposite of what you just did. So you're starting here in this position, elbow by your side, flex to 90 degrees, and you're going to internally rotate till your hand and your arm is touching your stomach. Then you're going to externally rotate back out. So in and out here, again, make sure this is slow and controlled and make sure that you're not allowing your elbow to migrate away from your side, just like that. Sometimes you get a little bit of that if you're not careful in controlling it. Make sure to keep that elbow in and internal rotation, external rotation. So for this next one, you're going to start here in 90 degrees of shoulder abduction, which means your arm is going to be in this position, resisted with the band again. And you're going to start here with your hand up at your head level. And you're going to internally rotate your shoulder until you're straight forward where you're in a almost a punching position there. And then externally rotate again, internal and external, slow and control. All right, so the next one is the opposite of what we just did. You're starting here with your shoulder at 90 degrees of abduction and you're starting in that forward position with your hand and then you're going to externally rotate your shoulder where your hand is even with your head again and then back to internal rotation and external rotation. All right, next we're gonna do shoulder abduction to 90 degrees. We're gonna do this with some type of weight. If you don't have a weight, you can use really anything you can find, a soup can, a water bottle with rocks in it, whatever you can find um, that's a little weighted. If you're uh, a younger athlete, you may not wanna use a um, that heavy of a weight. Um, obviously, if you're a little older, or a little stronger, you can up that weight, but you wanna make sure you can do this exercise comfortably uh, and make sure you're not struggling to perform whatever weight you have. So for this one, you're gonna stand with elbow, uh, or excuse me, your arm right by your side. You're gonna lift straight up and out, keeping that elbow straight, and you're gonna stop right at 90 degrees, 
and then let that arm right back down. Up, hold, and down. All right, so next we're gonna do scaption with that same weight. So we're gonna start again with your arm by your side. We're gonna take that out at an angle so we're not in flexion, we're not in abduction anymore, we're in that scaption plane. We're gonna come straight out, we're gonna stop right at 90 degrees, and then right back down. Make sure that your thumb is pointing up versus down like this or sideways. Make sure that thumb is pointing straight up towards the sky. So the upper hand calendar will be out uh, within the next. <laughs> okay. All right. So next what we're going to do is um, get a smaller weight and we're going to do some side lying external rotation. So make sure your elbow's in at your side, weight's down, uh, kind of at a mat and you're gonna raise that arm straight up. Just like so. All right, so next we're gonna be in a prone position and we're going to be working on shoulder horizontal abduction. So you're gonna start here with your fist towards the floor, holding the weight, and you're gonna come straight out into horizontal abduction, parallel to the floor and back down. You can also think of this as a T, and the next one we'll work on is, can be referred to as a Y. So here are your T's. So the next one we're going to do is actually scaption, like we did earlier, but this is going to be in a prone position, of course. So make sure your thumb is pointed up. You're going to come up into that scaption, parallel to the floor, or as close as possible. Just like that. You can also think of this as a Y. So we just did our T's. Here are our Y's. So for this one, you're going to start with your fist pointed towards the floor, and you're going to come straight up into a row which looks a lot like cranking a lawnmower, so you may want to think of that when you're doing this one to remember it, just like so. All right, so next what we're going to do is called a press-up. So to do that, you need to be sitting in a chair or on some type of mat, and you're going to put both hands down flat on the table or the mat, and you're going to literally lift your bottom off the table, hold for a few seconds, and come right back down. So up and down. Up and down. All right, next exercise is a push-up. This one's obviously uh, pretty obvious how to do, um, but just to prove that I can do a push-up, I'll show you here. Um, so, up in this position, going down, right back up. Um, you can modify this if needed. If you're unable to do a push-up, you can come on your knees and do the same thing. All right, so the next one we're going to do is biceps flexion, and then we're also going to show you how to do triceps extension. So this one's pretty straightforward. You're going to start with your elbow and extension, palm up, come up and just do a regular biceps curl, slow and steady and controlled. And then for the next one, you're going to come up into this position here, and you're going to extend straight overhead, slow and controlled for triceps. All right, and for the last four exercises, we're going to strengthen the wrist and forearm muscles. To do that, go ahead and grab a weight again. Um, we're going to start over the edge of a table, and you're going to um, lift your wrist straight up into wrist extension. Again, hold that just for a few seconds, and then slowly let it to the ground. Your next one's going to be wrist flexion, so just turn palm up towards the ceiling, and do the same thing, pull back towards you for wrist flexion. Same thing, slow and controlled. Okay, for the last two, and you can just kind of combine these and do these together. You can use this with a hammer as well if you don't have a weight, um, but we're gonna grab the edge of that weight and we're gonna work forearm supination back to the top. You can go ahead and do all 10 of those or however many reps you're doing, or you can do these combined. And go ahead and go into pronation, back to the top, supination, back to the top. On this one, just make sure that your arm's not too far out in front of you. You're going to get some shoulder compensation there, so make sure that elbow is as close to your side as possible while you're doing the forearm pronation and supination. Hey guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this video. We hope you learned something today and that this was helpful to you in some way. So you know our goal for this channel, the upper hand, is to give you guys the upper hand as you seek to better understand conditions of the upper extremity and just all topics related to occupational therapy in general. So please take a second out of your day, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can be sure that you're going to see all of our upcoming videos. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you next time.